Welcome to Geeks for Geeks. Today we'll reverse a cube using recursion. Our problem statement is given a cube, write a recursive function to reverse it. Standard operations allowed are nqx, add an item x to rear of cube, tq, remove an item from front of cube, empty, checks if a cube is empty or not. For example, if input cube has elements in order 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, then we obtain a cube having elements in order 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 6. Recursive algorithm. Pop elements from the cube if cube has elements, otherwise return empty cube. Call reverse function for the remaining cube. Push the popped element in the resultant reversed cube. As illustrated in this diagram, 5 is dequeued from the queue and then reverse queue function is called to reverse the remaining queue. Since we got the resultant reverse queue from the function we enqueue 5 in that resultant and thus we got the reversed queue. Let's see its C++ implementation and understand it by taking an example. First of all, we'll check if Q is empty or not. Here, in this case, Q is not empty. Thus, we'll store the value of front element in data. Then, we'll pop the front element that is, we'll pop 3. Now, we'll call reverse function for the remaining Q. Thus, in reverse function, we check if Q is empty or not. Here, Q is not empty. Thus, we will store the front element in data and DQ the Q, that is POP1. Now, we will call reverse Q function for the remaining Q. Thus, in reverse Q function, we check if Q is empty or not. Here, Q is not empty. Thus, we will store the front element in data and dq the q that is pop2. Now we'll call reverse q function for the remaining q. Thus in reverse q function we check if q is empty or not. Here q is not empty. Thus we'll store the front element in data and dq q that is pop4. Now we'll call reverse q function for the remaining q. Thus, in reverse q function, we check if q is empty or not. Here, q is not empty. Thus, we'll store the front element in data and dq the q, that is pop5. Now, we'll call reverse q function for the remaining q. Thus, in reverse q function, we check if q is empty or not. Here, Q is empty. Thus, we'll return. Now, we'll end Q5 to the resultant Q we got from reverse function. We return from the function. Now, we'll end Q4 to resultant Q we got from reverse Q function. Now, we'll return from the function. Now, we'll end Q2 to the resultant Q we got from the reverse queue function. Now we'll return the reverse queue function. Again we'll end queue 1 to the resultant queue we got from the reverse queue function. And then we'll return the reverse queue function. And then finally we'll end queue 3 to the resultant queue function we got from reverse queue function. Thus we got our desired output. Time complexity is on. Thank you for watching. Please leave us your likes and comments.